Welcome back to VL Extras, where we dive into the wildest tech stories shaking up the future. We've explored some crazy neurotech before, Meta's mind-reading experiments, Neuralink's brain chips, but nothing quite like this. Today, we're talking biocomputing. Picture this. In a Melbourne lab, human brain cells in a dish are playing the classic video game Pong, and they're getting better. This is Cortical Labs CL1, a biological computer that's rewriting what AI can do. So, what happens when you fuse human neurons with silicon? Let's meet the visionary behind it and find out if this is genius or madness. First, let's talk about the guy leading this sci-fi revolution, Dr. Han Wang Chong. Born and raised in Malaysia, Han studied medicine at the University of Melbourne. He worked briefly as a doctor but quickly realized his heart was in building something new. In 2014, he co-founded ClinicLoud, a medtech startup making a digital stethoscope for home health checks. Backed by big players like Tencent, it was a bold idea. But before COVID, people weren't ready for remote healthcare, and US regulations didn't help. ClinicLoud didn't take off, but it taught Han how to pivot. Fast forward to 2019, and Han's reading a Google DeepMind paper that sparks a wild idea. What if AI could tap into actual human brain cells? He teams up with Andy Kitchen, ClinicLoud's former AI research head, to found Cortical Labs in Melbourne. Their mission? Build biological computers by growing human neurons on silicon chips. It's not just about mimicking the brain like regular AI, it's about using real brain cells. Investors loved it. Blackbird Ventures dropped $673,000 in seed funding, followed by $895,000 from January Capital and others. Oh, and in 2023, they scored $15 million from folks like Lee Ka Shing's Horizons Ventures. This is no small fry. One way we like to think about this is that if Neuralink is to try to put a chip into a brain, why not go the other way and put the brain onto the chip? If we could use biocomputers to power cloud computing, we could decrease the power used by AI by thousands. Imagine a world where our brain cells are grown on silicon chips. Sounds like sci-fi, right? But we're kind of on our way. Our brain cells naturally communicate with each other using electrical impulses. And researchers have found a way to grow clusters of our human brain cells and then place them on top of silicon semiconductors. They then connect this device to a computer and test what sort of tricks or tasks these living human brain cells perform. Biology and synthetic hardware merge. Now this type of deep tech is only just starting. It's called biocomputing, or perhaps organic computing, or even wetware. Cue all sorts of questions. What can actual brain neurons do for modern day computing? What can living human cells do that man-made hardware can't? And will we one day live in a world where some of our machines are both living and artificial? Watch our show, Primer, on Bloomberg Originals to find out more. Now, let's get to the star of the show. The CL1, launched in March 2025 at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. It's the world's first commercial biological computer, dubbed Synthetic Biological Intelligence, or SBI. Here's how it works. Human neurons, grown from stem cells made from blood or skin, are layered onto a silicon chip. A microelectrode array zaps tiny electrical signals to talk to the neurons, while Cortical's Biological Intelligence Operating System, or BIOS, creates a virtual world for them. Think of it like a digital playground where neurons learn by reacting. In 2022, they proved it by teaching 800,000 neurons to play Pong. No coding needed, the cells just learned. The CL1's a shoebox-sized marvel, packed with life support tech pumps, filters, and nutrient reservoirs to keep neurons alive for up to six months. It uses just 850 1,000 watts, less than your gaming PC, and runs on glucose, not gigawatts of electricity. Compared to AI models like ChatGPT, which guzzle energy training on mountains of data, the CL1 learns fast with minimal input. Cortical says it could slash AI's energy costs by a millionfold. Applications? Think drug testing for brain diseases like dementia, smarter robotics, or even crunching complex data. They're building server stacks with 30 units each, aiming for cloud access by late 2025 via wetware as a service. Yes, that's a real term. 
This is the world's first commercial biological computer, running on living human cells. The CL1 computer is the brainchild of Melbourne-based Cortical Labs. This is where the neurons uh, would be embedded in. CEO and founder Han Wang Chong says it fuses cell-derived neurons with silicon, creating a new class of AI known as synthetic biological intelligence. Unlike using artificial neural networks, we grow real biological neurons into networks onto computer chips. It sounds like science fiction, but Han says the CL1 is capable of learning and adapting faster than standard silicon-based AI, while consuming significantly less energy. We take blood or skin, and we can transform them into stem cells, and from stem cells into brain cells or neurons that we then uh, use them for compute and uh, intelligence. Han says the neurons grow on silicon chip, with tiny electrical contacts connecting them to the digital hardware. And it's equipped with an artificial life support system to keep the cells healthy. We have pumps like the heart, uh, waste feeding reservoirs, uh, filtration units like the kidneys, and we have a gas mixer to take carbon dioxide, oxygen, uh, and nitrogen. Han says the CL1 could revolutionize drug testing and personalize medicine. With this kind of technology, we potentially could grow um, neurons taken from patients with, say, uh, a dementia or with epilepsy and test compounds and drugs that would then be personalized and tailored to that patient. But Han believes the CL1's potential doesn't end there, saying it could usher in a new age of AI. In the short term, is we can use it for life sciences, for personalized medicine, for drug discovery and development. But the longer term vision of the company here is to pioneer a new form of computing, where we can actually use these neurons that can process information with much quicker speed, with much less data, and with much more energy efficiency, so that we can get to intelligence, but without the significant cost associated with it. CL1 computers are destined for laboratories and research facilities capable of cultivating their own cells. They'll be manufactured to order and ready to ship. But here's where it gets tricky. Not everyone's sold. Madeline Lancaster, a brain organoid expert in Cambridge, points out that neurons in a dish haven't scaled much in 20 years. Playing Pong? A 1980s calculator could do that. She's skeptical about how cortical will achieve the exponential leaps needed to rival modern computers. Then, there's the ethical minefield. Cortical calls its neurons sentient, meaning they respond to stimuli. But what if bigger networks start acting conscious? Could they feel pain? Han says they're working with bioethicists, but the questions are huge. He admits it's a humongous technical moat. They're not just making hardware like NVIDIA, but software like OpenAI and proving it can do more than Pong. So, what's the deal with the CL1? At $35,000, it's cheaper than similar tech, which runs closer to $85,000. Changed computing forever. Could the CL1 do the same? It's a stretch to say it'll outsmart Silicon AI overnight. But its potential in medicine like testing epilepsy drugs or sustainable computing is tantalizing. Han's open to wild ideas like neurons trading Bitcoin, showing he's not afraid to dream big. Still, scalability and integration with existing systems are make or break. This game of Pong that you're watching right now is being played by a bunch of brain cells in a dish. Seriously, this is one of the craziest things I've ever covered. So here's what's going on. With this Pong game, scientists demonstrated that neurons in vitro can perform a goal-oriented task, which is different than simulating brain activity like we've done before. The name that some experts are using for this area of research is organoid intelligence, OI, as opposed to AI. This Pong playing ball of cells is called dish brain. But just to be really clear, this is not a brain. What they are doing is using 3D culture of brain cells called brain organoids alongside machine interfaces to try to create biocomputers. I'm a cybernetic organism. Why would we want those? Well, experts think that they might help store information, which could be important as we approach the limits of silicon computers. And also they might be able to perform more and more complex tasks, way beyond playing pong. With organoid intelligence and artificial intelligence, it just all the news feels very overwhelming. But if you like optimistic stories about how we can actually use these tools well, follow for more. Cortical Labs is pushing boundaries where others barely dare. From Han's pivot from medicine to this brain in a box, it's a story of grit and vision. But is this the dawn of true intelligence or a fancy science experiment? I'm torn, it's mind-blowing but messy. What do you think could brain cells beat AI, or are we hyping a high-tech Pong player? Drop your take in the comments, hit that like button if this blew your mind, and subscribe for more VL Extras. We'll see you next time. Nights, warm dreams, hustling for the cream. Every block, another challenge. Never would it seem silent whispers in the wind. Secrets unfold, weave stories with rhythm. Iron thread the gold.